Hi, in this video, I'll cover 40 EDR protection focusing on pre and post execution prevention, ransomware prevention, various remediation options available in 40 EDR, and at last, I will go over offline protection against zero day polymorphic malware. Now, let's take a look at the demo environment. Here, I have already downloaded few malware samples that I'll be using throughout the demo. 4D EDR collector service is running with 0% idle CPU along with 97 MB of RAM. All the tests will be performed on this Windows 10 desktop, which is part of default collector group on 4D EDR. This collector group has been assigned all default out of the box security policies. Now, let's start with our first use case of malware being written to the disk. Here, I will simply convert a malware file into an executable. And within few seconds, we will notice a new event pops up in the 4D EDR console. Looking at the event, we can see that pre-execution.exe is classified as a malicious event with file read attempt. Classification details provide further information like verdict by Fortinet. History includes any reclassification by Fortinet cloud services playbooks triggered by the event or any actions taken by SOC analyst. Triggered rules section provide information on all the rules violated by the malware. Now let's move on to our second use case of exfiltration prevention. For this, I will go ahead and disable pre-execution prevention policies for default collector group, which essentially means disabling next-gen AV functionality. Again, we will convert another malware file into an executable since this time AV functionality is turned off, we will be able to execute the application. At this point, the malware is running in the background and the very moment it tries to exfiltrate data or access and modify file system, 40 EDR post execution prevention will kick in and block all the communication along with terminating the process. Moving back to console, we can see new events. Malware noav.exe triggered multiple events like modifying operating system settings, try to access external malicious destinations, file creation, and another connection attempt to external malicious destinations. Looking at the trigger rule section, we can see this malware triggered multiple rules for exfiltration prevention policies like injected thread, invalid execution, malicious file, process hollowing, and few others. 40 EDR provide detailed information on each of these violations along with available remediation options. All these violations are also mapped to MITRE techniques and a link is made available for the users to get further details on the violation at MITRE website. Moving forward, let's take a look at automated remediation options available on 40 EDR. For this, I will go ahead and assign default out of the box playbook policy to default collector group. This policy is configured to terminate the process, delete the file, and clean persistent data. This time, I will use ransomware malware and name it as ransomware and playbook.exe. Again, AV is turned off, so we will be able to execute the malware. Malware is running in the background, and very moment any suspicious activity is detected, 4D EDR will terminate the process, and within few seconds, the malicious file will be deleted from the desktop. Looking at the console, we can see new event ransomware malware triggered multiple events starting with service access and later file write access. Looking at the history, we can see event is classified as malicious by Fortinet cloud services and playbook policies were triggered to delete the malicious file and terminate the event. Trigger rule section also highlight that the malware violated ransomware prevention security policies. Moving forward, Let's take a look at manual remediation option available on 40 EDR. 
I will go ahead and select pre-execution.exe event and click forensics. On the forensics page, we have multiple remediation options like isolate the device, retrieve the memory from a specific collector, add an exception or remediate the device. I will select remediate and choose remove selected executable. Click remediate and confirm the action. Let's move back to Windows Desktop to verify the deletion action. Here we can notice within few seconds the file pre-execution.exe will be deleted. Now let's move on to our next use case of isolating the device. For this I will go ahead and modify default playbook policy by selecting isolate device option under investigation and clearing all other remediation options. Again we will convert a malware file into an executable and run the application. Fodi EDR will terminate the process and playbook policy will kick in and isolate the device. We can verify this by launching Google Chrome application to access internet. Fodi EDR will display a warning message to the users stating that connection is blocked for chrome.exe and when we try to access internet using Chrome, we will get message stating firewall or antivirus software blocked the connection. Moving forward, we can see a new pop-up on the inventory tab highlighting the isolated collector. This red blocking icon will also show up in front of the collector on the inventory page. Here we can also filter isolated collectors. I will go ahead and remove isolation from this collector to cover our next use case of offline protection against zero-day polymorphic malware. To simulate zero-day malware, I will use cert util a Windows utility to check the hash of the file luzipos.ex underscore and later use echo command to append some random characters in order to modify the hash. Again we can check the new hash of the file and confirm that the two hashes are different. Now I will disable Ethernet adapter to simulate OT EDR collector in autonomous mode. At this point, 40 EDR collector has lost connectivity to the core, manager, aggregator and Fortinet cloud services. Again, we will convert a malware file into an executable and run the application. On detection of suspicious activity, 40 EDR collector will block the process and keep blocking it until the connectivity is restored and final verdict is received from 40 EDR core. Let's go ahead and enable Ethernet adapter to restore connectivity. Within few seconds, the event shows up on the console. Here we can select the event and run forensics on it. On the forensics page, we can select the file and search for hash on the virus total. Here we can see the new hash doesn't exist on the virus total. This concludes the demo. Thank you for watching.